rabbits with the green are done. Now we're going to do a cross green rabbit. You can see I've got laid out right here. Now we're going to be cutting across the green instead of going with it. You're starting to see the benefits of this, how versatile this bench is. Just another perfect example. So we've got to set up the tool a little bit different. The 78 plane right here, right there is a little cutter. This here is a depth gauge that controls how deep we go. So I'm going to take this off and I'll show you how this works and how to set that up for cross grain planing. Okay, so we'll remove this, this depth gauge here so we can access the, the cutter. And I'll, uh, I'm going to start a new uh, category in my uh, Amazon store, wranglermart.com, where I'm going to feature uh, the new planes. If you can't find an old one or don't want to fool around with uh, restoring an old one, there's some good ones out there by Stanley that uh, for what I consider to be a good price, and I'll include that in a new plane category. So you can, I'll put a set that in the subject heading too. So you can go to Wrangler, let's see, wranglermart.com. Whoops. Oh, that was bad. I should have been more careful. I'll be looking for the screw. I'll bring you back when I, and if and when I find it. Ooh, dodged a bullet there. Don't drop that. It was, it was laying on the vise. So here you can see this little piece right here. Bring you into camera. This little piece rotates and it's got a little cutter on it. I can see. Yeah, one of these is a cutter. And so what I'll do is right here, you can see now, now that cutter is sticking down below the sole of the plane. So this little cutter cuts that cross grain right in front of the, uh, of the planing iron. And that from the instructions is very important. So I'm going to put this in here. So here, I'll bring you up there. Now you can see it right there. You see that little, that little cutter sticking down there. Yeah, that's a good idea. That just makes sense. So if you've noticed that the, the lighting is much better in here, I'm really happy with the, the studio lights I, I, I got. That really makes a big difference on this sh closest detailed work. So now we'll have to reinstall our uh, depth gauge right here. And so I've got my combination square preset so it's exactly where I had it there so that's a quarter inch and I'll just carefully these have thumb screws on them but I don't want it to move so I'll just carefully tighten it down just that little extra with the screwdriver now I'm ready apparently I'm ready to plane crossed grain all right so here we go with the cross grade planing So again, what I see, you know, very effective, very effective, very different shavings, huh? Going across the grain. So I could see where you could have a little tear out on the, on the outside, the unsupported fibers there. Not important for me because this is all going to be buried, but uh, something to consider if that was going to be exposed. I don't know exactly how that would be, but again, uh, very controlled. That little cutter is the key, the little cutter sticking down there pre-cuts and keeps that from tearing out. Look how clean, we have a nice clean edge right there. Really clean for cross grain planing. There's our rabbit on three sides there. That is nice, crisp edges. You can see right there, that's where that cutter, that, that cutter cut beforehand there. So that is so interesting. What a beautiful, beautiful tool. So here's the completed bottom of our caddy and the rabbits just turned out great. I'm, I'm so glad I did this. This is going to give a, a lot of strength to it. Uh, very custom element. So let's see if we measured right. Hopefully this should just be a tight fit. So we've got the, we've got all the dividers in here 
and this will be the pre-glue. We'll fit all this before we pre-glue it, but we'll see here. Perfect fit. Not too tight. Oh, that's nice. Let me bring you, I'll show you inside here. The rabbit is really, that's really custom. Nice and nice and tight, nice and clean. We'll, we'll clamp that down and that'll fill in that gap there. That's the way to do that. That really is the way to do that. So I'm not gonna pair uh, the dovetails or any of this down here. This will all be clamped down and pulled tight. We'll glue all this up. And then when everything is dried, then we'll finish We'll finish all these off and clean everything up. I had to take a quarter inch, of course, off the center divider because I, I recessed that bottom up into it. So I just cut that down, cut both the quarter off both of those. But we are, we're ready. Um, here's the, the octagon handle. I'm so, uh, I'm really happy that I, I went with that. I don't know what it is about an octagon, but it feels very, very pleasing to the hand, it feels very secure. Maybe it's because you've got the hard edges on there that gives, feels like it gives you control, that you can really control it. I, I brought these out an inch and an eighth overhangs. I think it looks nice. And because they're, uh, it's octagon, it fits in there tight. It, and I can slide it out if I want to, but, it, but it's not going anywhere. I don't have to, I really don't have to secure it. But it really uh, lends, uh, lends itself well, I think aesthetically to the, to the box, it gives it kind of that old world. You know, a lot of things are, in the old days, were octagon shaped. And I think what it is, here's a perfect example, is my old plum hammer. It has, I would, you know, not a true oct, yeah, I guess it is an octagon. It's an octagon oval. But what's nice about that is it gives you uh, orientation points where you can index it by grabbing this and just you just automatically tells your brain with your thumb is running on the top that 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 that's flat and you can control it better so i think there is a lot of wisdom to that handle design i've seen it on old axes as well and i never really understood why and i, I may be off base but i think it has something to do with that So that is it. There's nothing left to do but sit and wait. Wait for the glue to dry overnight. We'll pull the clamps tomorrow and pare everything down and finish playing everything. And I cannot wait to see how the grain comes out with the beeswax and the boiled linseed oil and to start putting my tools in here. So that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video.